My research group is interested in the understanding of diseases of the immune system. We would like to use our knowledge to develop novel treatment strategies. On the one hand side, we are deeply rooted in the molecular genetic diagnostic of immune-mediated diseases. On the other hand, we try to incorporate our knowledge into the discovery of new drugs. In order to achieve this, our laboratory is very translational. In the morning, the physicians from rheumatology and clinical immunology see patients with immunodeficiencies, take blood from them and bring it to the Center of Translational Cell Research, in which our working group is housed. Here, the genomic DNA is first extracted from blood and the mutations that could explain the immunodeficiency are sought. For this, we use next-generation sequencing, which enables us to read all human genes in one experiment. However, each person carries about 250 new mutations that are not present in their parents. How do you find out these disease-causing mutations among all the hundreds of variants? For this purpose, Dr. Proietti and Dr. Caballero developed a database that identifies the genetic variants that may be causing the disease, similar to the search for a specific fingerprint in the database of the Federal Criminal Police Office. We often encounter mutations that have not yet been described in or investigated. Therefore, in the next step, we have to confirm these genetic results through functional studies. The cell culture of blood cells often helps us. One example is the CTLA-4 disease. In the autosomal dominant CTLA-4 insufficiency, the molecule CTLA-4 has a deleterious mutation. Patients therefore suffer from multiple autoimmune diseases, such as diabetes, inflammatory bowel diseases or psoriasis, because their immune system is constantly activated, but not sufficiently downregulated. Because of the mutation in CTLA-4, the regulatory T-cells cannot remove the B7 molecules from the surface of the antigen-presenting cell as efficiently. This can be only observed in fax analysis on the patient's blood cells, cultured together with antigen-presenting cells of a hamster. And now comes the translational approach. Shouldn't the replacement of the CTLA-4 molecule alleviate or even cure the disease? Fortunately, the CTLA-4 molecule, called Abatacept, is already available as a drug approved for rheumatoid arthritis. In a study founded by the BMBF, we are now testing the safety and therapeutic success of Abatacept in patients with a CTLA-4 defect, as part of the network for rare diseases in Germany. Furthermore, we are researching the role of the microbiome for our patients with immune deficiency. Dr. Kraus is one of the group's physician scientists who not only obtain medical training as an internist, but also works on his PhD within the collaborative research center IMPATH. During the last decade, it became clear that the gut microbiome, so the bacterial community that lives in our gastrointestinal tract, plays a prominent role in shaping the immune system. Here we try to answer the question how the gut microbiome can affect the everyday disease course of primary immune deficient patients. Another focus of the working group is the epigenetics of immune defects. Currently, we can only explain about 30% of our patients' diseases with monogenetic defects. Therefore, we try to prove that these genetic dysregulations of lymphocytes is causing the previously undetected immune defects. Epigenetics goes beyond genetics. Every cell has the same genetic information, its DNA. But what determines that the cells of the eye can see or the cells of the nose can smell? It is the epigenetic regulation of genes that determines these differences, for instance, by the process of DNA methylation. In the iPad project, we will use cutting-edge multi-omics profiling and integrative bioinformatic analysis to unravel the molecular pathways underlying common variable immune deficiency. By combining epigenomic, transcriptomic and proteomic analysis, we will exploit identified patterns to improve the diagnosis, stratification and mechanistic understanding of CBID patients.